Hi everyone, welcome back to Old World Home. Now that my kids are back in school and we are in a, a new routine, a new seasonal routine, and the temps are finally dropping, I thought I would bring you along over a few days of fall homemaking. I'm going to share with you a couple of cozy, warming, delicious recipes, a household task that I have been putting off that I really needed to tackle, and a couple of fall wardrobe updates. The first recipe I want to share with you is this very simple, but it looks very impressive different take on a cinnamon roll. So we have really been loving having cinnamon rolls in our home. I have been working with my sourdough over the past maybe two years now. And even if you don't use sourdough, you definitely could still make this recipe. And I just wanted to kind of test it out for around the holidays, or it could be something that you could bring to a brunch or something. So it's this beautiful braided cinnamon roll wreath. Instead of rolling it, on the shorter end you actually roll it lengthwise so it's nice and long and then you just cut it down from the top you leave a little section at the top still intact and please excuse my finger yes i had <laughs> covered my band-aid with some duct tape just to keep it waterproof but anyways you essentially just twist those two sections like you're braiding them and then you wrap the whole thing around like a wreath and now that I've done it one time I honestly think it would go so much faster if I did it again now that I know what I'm doing so again this could be something that I could freeze at that point and pull out and just bake whenever we wanted it let it thaw and then bake or maybe bake from frozen. I, ha I would have to play around with that. But it turned out so delicious. It baked up just for about 20, 25 minutes and my kids loved it. We topped it with powdered sugar and it, again, it was so beautiful and yet really pretty simple. So there are actually two different kind of homemaking tasks that I tackled this past week. The first is also related to my wardrobe. So I picked up a new dress, I actually got two, that are very similar from a brand I'd never heard of. It just came up as an ad. These beautiful block printed dresses, they're 100% cotton, and I wound up getting two because they were on sale and I think maybe I got free shipping. But when I got it, it was humongous. Even though it was the, it was my size and I couldn't have gotten it any smaller, it still just runs very large. I think that is just supposed to be the style of the dress. So I have really been practicing with our sewing machine a lot more lately. My daughter has been into it, so we're kind of working on it together and it's been really fun. So I took it upon myself to just pin up the dress and do the tailoring myself. I have brought dresses to tailors in the past and of course I want to support artisans and their skills but it's not inexpensive so if I can do it myself this was a good piece to practice on because it was honestly just some straight lines. It is still an oversized dress that's still the style but it fits so much better and I could wear it very loose and casual, but the way I intended to wear it even before I received them was with a belt. I love that look. It's very comfortable and you know cozy for the cold weather, but it adds a little tailoring when you can cinch it in. And I have a brown belt and a black belt, which actually goes, either one could work with this dress because it's got sort of the rust and the charcoal colors. I, like I said, I loved it so much. I actually got two of them. So I do also have it in this beautiful blue color and I haven't yet taken in the blue one. I need to still do that. That's still on my list, but I'm really happy that I got that dress tailored and I think it's a beautiful addition to my fall wardrobe. If you're enjoying hearing about my week of homemaking, I wanna let you know that this video is also in collaboration with my friend, Davy Killian. I will link to her YouTube channel and video down below. Davy is a dear friend of mine here on YouTube. She is one of the most hardworking, diligent, women, godly women that I enjoy following here on YouTube. And she just shares her life and her homemaking in such a beautiful way. So definitely after you're done watching my video, go and check her out, subscribe, send her some love. She is also sharing a day of fall homemaking. I know I mentioned in a previous video, homemaking video about how I really wanted to 
do some updating to my kids wardrobes and really simplifying them so i'm definitely going to show that to you but the other homemaking task that i tackled this week that really needed to be done was to clean out our secondary refrigerator that we keep in the garage so it used to be in my husband's garage which is sort of a detached larger garage and i have to go outside to actually get to it and that's where i would put some overflow grocery items in the fridge or I would use the freezers for freezer meals which is really what I wanted this freezer and fridge to be cleaned out for is because I really want to make some freezer meals to stock myself up for you know the rest of the school season as we head closer to the holidays it's just really nice to have those on hand so we actually moved the refrigerator to our smaller garage which is attached to our home that way I can access it without having to go outside so we moved it and I went ahead and cleaned it out there wasn't much in there to begin with so it was a good time to clean it out before I restock it so it's just a junky fridge it's nothing super you know brand new it was used when we got it and i just wanted it to be cleaned something had dripped i think it was an ice pop had kind of leaked onto the bottom so all that just needed to be really cleaned and disinfected i did clean out the freezer i don't think i got any footage of it but there is some food in there so i didn't want to leave it open too long because it's hot you know it's hotter in the garage since it's not air conditioned so I didn't want to keep it open for too, too long, but that did get cleaned out as well. So now I am really happy that that is cleaned and ready to be used more this fall and winter. So like I mentioned, our clothing and laundry situation has been a little crazy over the past couple of years as we've added children and added clothing. And I will say that I think I'm pretty diligent about getting out things that are ripped or too small and you know donating things that they're not using but even so i really needed to work with them to just create a wardrobe that they really love and that they're excited to wear and isn't full of things that they are not going to wear i definitely had to let go of my sort of hopes or you know things that i would like them to wear but they just are not into so just being very realistic and practical in this season so i want to show you what their closets and drawers look like my daughters have a shared closet so we can only access one side at a time but they basically look identical on both sides so the big change is that i added for each of them these little three tiered or three drawer dressers Ideally, I looked for a while for some lovely wood pieces, maybe something that might have been a nightstand, something that would fit here in this space just as well as these do. I didn't have any luck, so these were very inexpensive, and if I ever do find something, I could potentially use these elsewhere and swap them out. But for now, the size and the function is exactly what I needed. So on the left, we have dresses, which is incredibly pared down from what I used to have on hand for them. But this is a much more reasonable amount. They actually wear them all. And honestly, some of them are even very summery. So they may be getting donated pretty soon. And we may only have about three to five dresses, I think is the range we're gonna kind of stick to right now. And then on this side, she just has, you know, a cardigan, a little hoodie, a little lightweight jacket, just a couple different layering options. And then on the top are some sweaters and sweatshirts as it starts to get cooler in the mornings, but you don't necessarily need, you know, something heavy all day. Those are good layering pieces. And then she has a couple more at the bottom and a couple long sleeve. But really the bulk of what will be her winter wardrobe is up here in this basket. A lot of long sleeves that I can swap out for the short sleeves when it gets a little colder. So in the top drawer are tops. So they have each maybe, I never actually counted them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about 10 tops, 10 short sleeve tops. In here are usually undergarments and then some shorts for wearing under dresses. In the middle drawer are pants and jeans, 
leggings and shorts. So again, the two pairs that she has are probably going to be phased out within the next few weeks or so. Leggings are great for at home or under dresses and then pants. She does have one on at school. So about five pairs of bottoms. I think is going to be really good and manageable. And then the bottom is pajamas and they each have about three to four pairs of pajamas in that bottom drawer. And then likewise, my older daughter's side, she has again dresses and this, you know, sleeveless one will probably be phased out. She might add one or so throughout the fall and winter, but Honestly, three is probably a good amount for her. She has three different lightweight jacket options, lots of fun buddies, and then she has some long sleeve options here. I don't have an overflow basket for her, so that's pretty much her long sleeve options. And then we do have this chest wardrobe, and they actually share this bottom drawer with socks and then she has undergarments and then in these two drawers are kind of long sleeve sweaters hoodies things that she can layer with again in the fall and winter so then the top drawer is very similar it's just tops just short sleeve tops right now and she has about eight so just slightly less and then middle is again two pairs of shorts and four pairs of jeans, and then has one on at school, and then layering shorts for dresses are there, and bottom is pajamas. Very minimal amount, very easy to maintain, and this system is working very, very well for them. As far as my boys, they have a similar setup. They have just a couple things hanging in their closet, Honestly, I'm trying to keep it to about two button downs that are kind of like church tops or something they would need that's a little bit nicer. And then a couple of lightweight jackets or vest options. And then in their drawers, their main drawer has what I'm gonna try to keep to about three pairs of bottoms. Tan pair, a black pair, and a jean option. And right now he does have some shorts, but again, those will be phased out pretty soon. And I'm really gonna try to just stick to these three bottoms. And then for tops, he again has a similar amount to the girls, less than 10. And then he has pajamas, again, about three options there and some sweatshirts because I definitely noticed last winter he would wear a short sleeve shirt with a sweatshirt most days of the week. He really didn't care for a long sleeve shirt for whatever reason. So I may add a couple over the winter just to give him an option, give him some extra warmth, but you know, we'll see what he decides that he wants to wear in those colder months. And then for my youngest boy, again, very similar amount. He does need a couple extra bottom options. So he will have those three and then probably a couple of sweatpant options, but then a very similar amount of tops, less than 10. Again, pajamas, about three options, and then a couple of sweatshirts to add some extra layers and warmth for the fall and winter. Minimizing their clothes in this way has truly cut down on the laundry mountains. I mean, I'm still doing laundry constantly. There's just always something to wash and, you know, kids play, they get dirty, they wear multiple outfits many days. And I honestly, as the seasons go on, if they're not wearing certain things, I am totally fine with it getting even more simplified or even more minimal. So of course it's a constant ebb and flow and then seasons change and you know, sizes change. So definitely something I have to constantly be keeping on top of, but so far this minimized amount is working really well. So lastly, I wanna share a super easy and delicious fall inspired dinner, could also be a lunch, centered around some delicious acorn squash. So all you need to do is cut it in half and scoop out the seeds and then put it in some sort of roasting tray with olive oil and salt and pepper and you just roast them at 400 degrees for about 40 minutes until it's nice and soft and gets kind of browned 
And then while it's roasting, you can prepare the filling. So this is gonna be a stuffed acorn squash. So for the filling, I did ground Italian sausage, just cook that up in a pan. And then once that was cooked, I took it out. And then in that sausage, you know, in the drippings, I chopped up a onion and an apple and I sauteed them. I added a little more olive oil, sauteed that with a little salt and got that nice and tender. And then I added in this brown rice quinoa mixture. You could of course use any kind of grain that you like. You could use, you know, a white rice, you could use a wild rice. I had never tried this particular brand before, but the ingredients looked really clean and it is super quick because it's already cooked. So this is a great way also to use up some cooked leftovers. So I just added that in with the meat mixture and then I grated in some cheddar cheese and some Parmesan because I had those two on hand. You could honestly use just about any cheese that you had on hand. And then that creates the delicious filling for the acorn squash. You could definitely bump up the fall flavors and put a little allspice or a little nutmeg. That would be also really delicious. I should have done that, but I didn't think of it at the time. So once your filling is done, you just stuff it into the acorn squash, put a little more cheese on top if you like, and then finish it off in the oven about 15 minutes. And then you have a really delicious main dish or it could also be a side along with something else but it's such an easy cozy meal that really highlights these flavors that we may not eat all year round at least i don't this is something i really only ever crave or want at this fall time it feels really good to have tackled a few of those homemaking tasks that i had been putting off or just needed the time to take care of. And hopefully this encourages you to take care of something in your home that maybe you didn't have the time to address during the summer or something that you really only do at this time of year. So it's my encouragement to you to get it done and just check that off and have that great feeling of accomplishment. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you are new to my channel, be sure to stick around and subscribe. Be sure to also check out Davy's channel. I have her linked down below and I'll be talking to you very soon. Take care guys.